started filming now. Um, okay, so Alicia, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about this project that you're working on now, Encounter for Joy, and sort of um, what kind of brought you here, what the inspiration for, was the, for the project was broadly? Sure. Encounter for Joy, um, it, it, it came about because last year during the, well before, before last year, but I was feeling socially very disconnected uh, and uh, I was seeing how we become disconnected with nat nature and our natural landscape and so I kept asking myself that question and then you know the lockdowns happened and I started to feel really um, alone, I felt alone and disconnected and I wanted to touch people and be with people and be intimate with people, um, have, talk to them and that all just disappeared, work disappeared and I used to come here, this is the only place I could come to, I don't know, I guess see nature was close to home so we're really allowed to Basically, I don't know how many kilometers we were, I can't remember, but we were supposed to just not be further than what, 15 k's or something like that. So I'd come here routinely and and I remember, you know, people would just be exercising but not looking at each other. It, 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 it broke my heart and I'd be walking and, and trying to catch people's gazes and and so I, I was grieving. I was grieving my grieving my identity, I was grieving and then and then these conversations started to happen with different people. Yeah, I, I grieved this, I grieved that, I lost this. Um, and so I wanted to make a body of work that responded to that. And because I love clowning, I felt like I wanted to use that as the art form to express those those feelings of that need. Um, and Encounter with Joy is, it is big, a part of a, um, a bigger project, a theatrical experience. So I've kind of taken a part of that show that I've been developing over the last couple of years and then plonked it into this, I guess, this landscape and sort of zooming in and zooming in to that experience um, where, as in clowning, for me, I need to have that interaction with an audience. It's so important to, without an audience, I don't know if the clown exists. I'm not saying that that's not possible, but for me, my experience. So I'm, so yeah, you know, pe pe people and having them react and respond to what you're doing and connect, people to connect with. Uh, so I felt that perfect opportunity to do that on the greenway and people passing by um, and it's been beautiful it's been such an amazing experience so far how has that experience been so far have you been having these interactions or because i know you've yeah. got um the uh, you, you the the time scheduled for the weekends are they more performances yes yeah okay can you talk about that a little bit sure so um i so be between ten, well, the morning ten and one at one o'clock or twelve o'clock, I'm just in this container, and that's where I've got all my bits and pieces and props and costume, and I take my time. I have the door open, so if people want to come in and have a chat while I'm getting dressed and change, and I'm trying kind of different physical shtick, sh um, and seeing what that's like. So I'm sort of developing ideas, and then between two and five, then I go out. It's just um, under, sort of by the grove of trees, just past the bridge, um, above. I think it's Lilyfield Road, so it's just under there. And I put myself there, and I and um, yeah, and I just wait. Um, I don't impose myself, at, you know, as people are walking by. A lot of people have been curious. Sometimes, you know, there, there might be a sudden look. Um, I mean, I, I'm bereft. I look, I do look out of place. I have this kind of wild hair and you know, wearing black, and so people have been curious. Um, 
first day was a bit tricky because I was just feeling my way into it but um, I met this beautiful man, this gentleman, um, actually now I forgot his name but uh, he came, so he came on the Saturday and then he came back on the Sunday again to, to me and I mean he's an ex-journalist, he's retired and he we had this beautiful conversation. It's actually tricky because I, I had imagined myself I'm a silent clown, you know, in a way, and um, I've, because of these encounters, I've had, I, uh, um, I had to find that voice, my clown's voice, because people want to talk, people want to share their story, and want to know what's going on, and, and, and so, that's been wonderful, to be able to, yeah, meet people where they're at, and so, that, yeah, that gentleman came, that was, that's a lovely story, I mean, um, just hearing about his life and where, you know, where he's going, where he's been, we talked about where do you go after you die, um, these beautiful interesting questions that sometimes don't get raised and, you know, I had my thoughts about it and he had his and they, you know, they were dissimilar but we still were able to connect see each other and for who we are. Just I don't know, this. And so that was lovely and this beautiful girl, Lisa, she came, she's a dancer and um, you know, I ask so there's a sign and I say hello and then I flip it and then it says, Can you make me laugh? So I'm subverting the role of the clown. And um, Immediately, she just she was like, "All right, yep, why not?" <laughs> she grabbed the, the rope, the Avatar spell of rope, and she grabbed it, and she and then she um, she trapped me and her and her in it. So I was facing her like this. It was gorgeous, and all of a sudden we just had this encounter. We were there for I don't know how long, just talking, while I was you know wrapped around this red velvet rope and. It was beautiful and then we sat down and we had a long long conversation I don't know I mean I can't I lost time that's lovely yeah that's yeah lovely. what amazing experiences you're having yeah. yeah yeah it's really nice um how what do you uh can you sort of um talk me through how this uh you say it's part of sort of a broader project um maybe if you could sort of talk about this project in terms of how it relates to your broader sort of creative practice yeah um well it's a, it's a the idea is a th it's a theatrical, it's a show, mm -hmm. theatre, well, on the stage. Um, its working title is um, She Looked Really Happy. And um, it is about a woman who lost joy. She doesn't know where she's put it, where she, I don't know, maybe it rolled down the hill or just misplaced it. Um, and she's waiting uh, for that to come along. And all sorts of um, things happen as she's waiting and there's a lot of breaking the fourth wall and interaction with an audience and so forth so it's it's um it's still in development so i'm not sure even know where where yeah there's no end to it yet but uh, that's that's what it is and how it informs my practice really i guess you know for me um i'm always searching i mean i'm i love the poetry of the clown the beauty of the clown and how they have that I do in, in children's hospitals as a clown doctor has really um, inspired me to do this work but outside of the hospital because I think everybody needs healing and love and laughter and connection so it's it's kind of yeah I guess it's it's part of that it's part of just my interest in bringing, sharing that mm. That's lovely. Yeah, I think you're you're right. I mean, we do <laughs> the, the the healing factor is something that's not just inside of hospitals, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, my dream is to be able to do this in workplaces and you know, prison. I don't know wherever, like wherever they let me in. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading when I was um, reading the information about. Uh, your project here yes. um it was sort of describing that you um you know are yeah, having these encounters with people and kind of um showing them what are those sort of workshops yes. where you're sort of helping people kind of 
learn some of this sort of approach? Yeah, yeah. so I, I mean, my joy is teaching. I love coaching and teaching. So that's also part of it, sharing the, um, the skills and the, the benefits that come with clowning. You know, I don't, I don't necessarily do it. I don't think I do it for therapeutic reasons, but a lot of people do. Um, so there will be a workshop um, here on Saturday the 8th of May. 10 to 1, it's free. Um, you don't have to have any experience, it's just come along and people um, talk and open up. So you can come along with your son or daughter or cousin or granddaughter or whatever you want, um, sister. And yeah, we'll just be playing in nature and how the clown um, responds to everyday phenomena and how that might inspire the way that you see the world and play with the world. Uh, so you can be inspired by sounds and sensorially like touch or whatever it is and how then you might be able to use it theatrically or in your everyday life. So it's not just for performance, it's for anyone who's interested. Mm. But we don't, we don't, we're not going to go too much into um, the, the, tech, the technical aspects of it. It's more just about how to, how to create laughter and moments of play in your everyday life. And how it, basically, it's everywhere. Play is everywhere. Yeah. So that's, yeah, that's the workshop side of things. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, I really enjoy as well that um, engagement with with sort of physicality and play and then with with place with working with where you are Absolutely. yeah I really I appreciate mean, I, that my, my yeah my um my philosophy is really about the body telling the story and how using our body we can find that creativity and and let your audience have that, that the, the moment the emotional moments we're not supposed to you know we're just creating with the body um oh no you've got to I did. Yeah, flu. And calling on our interviewer. <laughs> there is. See, every day for long. Exactly. <laughs> That's you don't it. Know when it's going to happen. It's break all and end. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, lovely. Okay, and um, so you're saying that this um, is part of a, a theatrical performance that you have. Is that where you see this current residency working towards? Do you have other intentions of where you want to be? Um, building this further? Um, yes, so the first one I hope that I can develop um, material, so this is my way of also developing material um, to put into the show. Great. Um, yeah, so that's, and I don't have a date for when that show will be because I'm being um, reserved. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm waiting for, I'm just sort of seeing how things go this year. So I'm not locking anything in, but um, hopefully maybe next year. Um, but I'd love for potentially other uh, other councils maybe to take on the project and activate other spaces, um, bring wonder and you know awe and beauty to another space. So perhaps that, that might be a cool thing that could happen. Yeah, yeah love it. Um, okay, great. Thank you for all of this. Is there anything that you else that you want to sort of be able to convey about what you're doing here that we haven't already talked about? Um, no, I guess just pausing, pausing and, and having a moment to just be and really, you know connect with artists and nature. And I think that's if anything. That's what I've really loved about this project, Edge Greenway, is to have this opportunity to, to do that in a calm, relaxed way where there's no pressure. And that, that I would say it's the same thing for the community who are here and people who are working or doing fitness. It's, it's just come along and you know, just meet us. We don't bite. Much. <laughs>